Love and Randy are playing Farming Simulator 22, and welcome back to the Upper Mississippi River Valley. Since last episode, finished up the double crop soybeans on field 42, so those are all done. At least they should be. I should probably check the map, shouldn't I? When, yeah, I, I say they're done, then we go check the map later, and it's like, what in the world? Big missing? No, no, it looks like we're pretty good there on field 42. Uh, what is going on with field 43, though? Something is wrong there. Looks like I should probably check that. We'll, we'll get back to that here in a minute. Anyway, over by field 27 and 28 here now. We're going to work on the double crop soybeans that are on this field. Also, in between episodes, when I was looking like, I'm pretty sure it's time to plant wheat here. And it's like, where in the world is that calendar at? Um, I didn't realize it until after I was done recording there. I was like, oh, uh, somehow, and I don't know how, but I've had this happen a couple of times now. I don't know if, for anyone watching, if you've had this, let me know. Like, well, anyone have any ideas what's going on? But somehow seasonal growth got turned off again. I think, is this like the third time in the last little bit here? And I'm, I'm trying to think if that's all been on this map or not. Like the third time on this map or it's been the last two maps or something like that. I've, been, I've had this, like the, the calendar gets turned off. And, and of course, the, if, yeah, if you turn off seasonal growth, that one, then you don't need the calendar. That's not, there's the calendar. Then you don't need the calendar, right? That is, I'm, I'm thinking that's maybe why the double crop soybeans are ready. I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm not sure. Because again, last year in the game, the double crop soybeans were not ready until December. Which meant we got snow. Which meant double crop soybeans were a pain to harvest. And uh, we did not do very good yield-wise either, I don't think. Even though the uh, the game yield map claims we did. But uh, it lies. It lies. Absolute lies. So anyway, got the map turned back on, Evan. We're harvesting double crop soybeans in October. Uh, I, for one, am not going to complain too much because, I mean, yeah, that kind of sucked last year in the game, harvesting soybeans in the snow. Anyway, uh, it is also uh, wheat planting time as well. Uh, I don't probably won't get to that here this episode, I've won. I figure, well, maybe I'll save that for next episode. But, uh, yeah, next episode... Definitely want to start uh, working on plants and wheat. We'll uh, break out the great big uh, John Deere drill there. And I'm thinking probably like 42 and is it 41? Yeah, 41 and 42 is what I'm thinking. We'll plant uh, wheat in everyone. That's my plan anyway. Uh, of course, as you folks probably know, my next episode will probably change that. But that is the, uh, the plan at this point here. Anyway, we're going to start it on the uh, field 27 and 28 here. We'll get this uh, harvested here. Uh, course play did a pretty good job there on the, the last field. I uh, did have a little bit of an issue like halfway through, and I don't know what happened, but both grain carts stopped working. Like, course play turned off. I, I don't know why. I'm gonna, maybe I clicked the button at some point. I, I, I know I've had that a few times. Uh, like, if you do the right thing in the game, uh, I don't know if it's the right thing if it breaks it, does it? But anyway, if you do the wrong thing, maybe we should say that. If you do the wrong thing in the game, like, horse play shuts off for some reason. The only part that was weird with that is the combines were still going. Like, the combines were still on horse play. Just both grain carts decided to quit. I don't know why. I didn't see anything wrong with either one of them. They were just both various locations. Stop. Kind of weird. Anyway, started them back up, and then they finished the rest of the field just fine. Speaking about finishing the field, by the way, ooh, that reminds me. I think I've got one more truck out on the road. Or no, are, are both trucks there? Oh, yeah, no, okay. Yeah, both trucks are there. And when I say both trucks, uh, four trucks, technically. Uh, two of the trucks were full there after the last harvest. I sent them down to the rail silo to empty there. Uh, probably should actually check. How are we looking on soybeans here so far? Soybeans, 615,000. We're looking at a max value of $2.7 million worth of soybeans here. Now, yeah, again, we got more to harvest here. That, of course, is in July. Uh, as I said, that's kind of the one downside to doing the soybeans here. I've got to wait, like, all the way until July until we get that money. Ideally, I'd like to have that money, like, in December. You know, then come planting time, we can start uh, looking at equipment we might want, right? But in this case, we'll have to wait all the way till uh, July. So, I don't know. Anyway. running the John Deere X9 1100s here again, of course, with the uh, the John Deere HD 50F headers here. 
the articulated ones, which actually reminds me, I probably should actually put them in articulated mode. Usually whenever I put them on the trailer, I actually always try to lock them up, because otherwise, uh, well, yeah, things tend to go wrong. And speaking of uh, trailer, by the way, I think I've got the other trailer down here. I play, Yeah, there it is. It's sitting right over there. You can see the red truck I want. I plan on giving that a try here this time around. We'll see what's how that holds up with these headers. Hopefully, we can actually, like, lock them on the trailer. And hopefully, they'll, like, actually stay there. And if it works quite well, but I'll probably end up uh, getting another one of those. We'll get another truck and trailer. You know, only, like, another, uh, what is it, hundred, two hundred thousand dollar uh, trailer just to put your head on. That doesn't seem quite right, but <laughs> if it works, it works. Unfortunately, while uh, I would say Giants has made some massive improvements to the header trailers here in the game, it still doesn't, like, lock them on sometimes. You know, in real life, I have a lot of times you have some sort of locking mechanism, uh, whether it's straps or, you know, depending on the header, it actually, like, actually has locks that go into the header. You know, yeah, actually, like, locks it onto the trailer. Unfortunately, uh, Giants has gotten better here in 22. Uh, before Farming Simulator 22, up in my opinion, the header trailers were basically useless garbage. Uh, I never basically ever used them. Uh, you, you put a header on them and they just fall right back off. Like you had no hope of a prayer of those header trailers basically working. But fortunately, uh, Giants finally pulled their heads out of their uh, you know wares here in Farming Simulator 22 and actually. Uh, Made the header trailer so that they did kind of sort of lock. Let's see, is this not in there? That thought I had the flex ball. Notice all how the combine all of a sudden kind of sat down a little bit there, everyone. That seems a little bit better. Why Giants didn't set their header up this way, I don't know, but that'd be kind of a cool. Uh, idea there. It's what it's supposed to do in real life, too, for what it's worth. On top of, like, flexing the ground, too, which... Uh, that would be a cool feature. I don't know if we'll uh, see that too much here in Farming Simulator 22 or not. I'd, I'd like to say back in Farming Simulator 19, that one, uh, we had one of the headers that actually did have a little bit of flex to it. I could be wrong, but that seems to be what I recall remembering. I don't remember which uh, brand of header it was there again, but uh, pretty sure someone actually found a way to have a little bit of flex actually in the cutter bar, but like I said, again, that's what it's supposed to have. That's actually another big change. Talk about combine changes here in Farming Simulator 21. Uh, Giants finally pulled their heads out of there. You know where as far as header height adjustment goes here as well, and you know, flexing with the ground here a little bit. It used to be back in previous versions of the game, when you had to make sure you matched your header to your combine. Otherwise, yeah, sometimes if they weren't the same, you'd end up uh, with the wrong header on the wrong combine. When you go to lower it down, I went, well, the combine would just lower that header down into the ground and just it left your wheels right up off the ground. That was obviously unique. Uh, Giants seem to only uh, grasp the concept of all the way down and all the way up. Still maybe slightly true to some extent, but not quite as bad as it used to be. Now if you mix and match headers, it usually works in my experience. And also we are almost full here. Great guard over here pretty quick. I have to drive all the way like halfway around the field. Oh, it's kind of funny. Oh well. Again, crop construction starting on them and don't want to drive through the field. That would be no good. I want to do that. Force play can do that, but I cannot. And uh, by the way, for those who want to guess, I did actually see Force play do that a couple times here on the uh, last field. Uh, Force play just couldn't quite figure out its path finding and decided to just drive across the crop or what. But typically, Force play is not supposed to drive on the crop. That doesn't mean it doesn't, though, of course, as I'm sure you folks are probably aware. Okay, uh, that is interesting. I am fairly certain that is not how I left that. 
Oh man, I gotta drive the fence. Oh well. Why didn't I park the John Deere up front? Then I could have drove the John Deere. Actually, probably a better choice. John Deere's probably a little quicker. I might still do that. I do have to drive halfway around the field here. Yeah, let's let's go uh, get ourselves a proper tractor here. Only because it's quicker, to be honest. But, uh, yeah. And not a lot quicker to, what, 26 on that one? 32 on this one? Hey, I mean, when you're only going, uh, you know, 26 versus 32, it's just a bit of a difference there, right? Okay, full speed ahead. Uh, for those of you who remember, by the way, uh, fields 27 and 28 here. Uh, we took these fields and uh, combined them up and removed a couple of ditches. If you look real close at the map there, you can see a little bit uh, lighter color down there where we removed a ditch. And then, of course, between 27 and 28 there as well, there was quite the ditch in between that as well. Did a little bit of terraforming and was able to uh, remove that. We'll open the tarp here. Maybe it'll actually be open by the time we get over there. Hopefully this is a feature. I'd love to see this in uh, future equipment and additions of the game here. I have one. Actually, opening tarp doesn't necessarily add anything as far as the game is concerned. Maybe I'm a... But it still looks cool, right? So again, how about you folks? Definitely wouldn't mind seeing more of that. Not sure what it... Oh, my goodness. Come on. Stop, tractor. What's up with the brakes here? Do I need to go back and uh, check some settings here somewhere to, like, uh, the brake force get turned down or something? I don't think this car is that. Only 20,000 20, liters, so... And a reminder, while we're on Lone Yeven, if you haven't already clicked the uh, subscribe button, don't forget to do so. Always very much uh, appreciated. And, uh, excuse me. And, of course, once you are subscribed, make sure you turn on your notifications. Get notified of the latest, greatest Upper Mississippi River episode going live. And, of course, if you want to give the video a thumbs up there, too, also very much uh, appreciated. And uh, while we're mentioning it, down below in the uh, description of the video... Uh, if you don't own Farming Simulator, you can find a couple links to buy Farming Simulator. They basically just let uh, Giants know that, hey, you used R.D. Allen to buy Farming Simulator. So, just kind of lets them uh, know. And, of course, down below in the uh, description, you can find the rest of my social media links as well. Not necessarily maybe as active on some of them as I probably could be, but they are down below. Anyway, let's head over to the uh, comment section here in a minute. I wonder we'll see what you folks had to say here from uh, last episode. Hatcher was saying, good video. Uh, oh, uh, he was also saying, congrats to you and your wife on your new baby. Uh, your audio faded out completely. That's not my truck. So, yeah, I know that. Uh, that's like I said, that's why I don't use those uh, trucks. It's a nice looking truck, of them, but the, oh my goodness, just the sound on them is ridiculous. And I, I did look, by the way. Uh, Giants has changed up the way they did the audio files here in uh, Farming Simulator 22. I have not taken the time to learn how to work with those yet. Um, I used to know back, you know, previous versions of the game how to work with them, but. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how it's done here in Farming Simulator 22 as far as audio goes. I was going to look to see if we could turn it down real quick and simple, but uh, not quite so much. And uh, speaking of the uh, new baby, by the way, for those of you who haven't seen the uh, video here, um, this past weekend and two weekends ago, when, well, check those videos out and you'll, uh, you'll see what uh, that comment is about. right off the top of my head what I 
titled that video again. <laughs> Probably something uh, along those lines. Uh, a farmer was saying, I did a test with a 608 acre field. 608 acres? Or 6.8. Say so 608, that's a huge field in uh, Farming Simulator 22. Anyway, that's what he says. 608 acre field in Farming Simulator 22. Uh, says he planted corn the first year and got 132,000 bushels of corn that he dried. Uh, value at 7.5 million. Uh, planted soybeans the next year and got 67,000 bushels of beans worth 9.25 million. So beans make more money in Farming Simulator 22. Uh, that isn't, of course, taking into account all the fertilizer needed as well as the cost of propane and production costs. But, uh, yeah, very good point. Uh, if you're playing with precision farming, soybeans don't need any fertilizer. So maybe not a massive cost savings, but there's definitely a bit of cost savings there, right? Now, uh, to addressing the question of how the 132,000 bushels of corn versus 60, uh, how he made more money off of soybeans, I'm not entirely sure of one. All the other data I have ever seen has always indicated soybean is absolutely the worst paying crop in the game. Not even like like middle of the road. I'm mean, uh, all the other data, and I'm talking all of it. I mean, all the other data I have seen indicates soybeans is the worst paying out per acre crop in the game. Now, of course, that that worst payout per acre I mean, doesn't take into consideration other inputs. It, it's just strictly here's what you get from corn. Here's what you get from soybeans. In, in fact, the people have done this. They've tested all the crops. And uh, again, soybeans is by far the worst. Uh, Reet Peter was saying, enjoying your videos. Hey, thank you very much for that. Uh, he was saying we run a 40 foot flex king and two 50 footers. Nice to see someone actually making one. Do you have any thoughts on making a bigger version? a bigger version because like yeah I'm not sure uh, Norton was saying curious what happened to your calendar uh, I have not had good luck with double crop beans they aren't ready until the following season oh how do you manage that one there Norton oh, and yeah of course uh, yeah if you watch the first part of this video there Norton you'll realize what happened somehow seasonal growth got turned off Again, you would think I would have remembered that. This is not the first time I've had this problem. Uh, I think it's the second. No, important side, third. For sure, third time. And I'd like to say, it's, is it all on the same map? I don't remember what map I've had this on. I, I'd like to say, I know I've had this issue before I won. This is for sure the third time I've had it where the seasonal growth has somehow gotten turned off. Which, of course, when seasonal growth is turned off, there goes your planting map and your harvesting map. I don't know. No idea what caused that. So I'm kind of curious. Anyone else uh, has had that problem? And if you know, like, what, how does seasonal growth get turned off? Oh, actually, okay. Reading the next comment here. Uh, Hooper actually uh, picked up on it here. Uh, he was saying, you didn't accidentally turn off seasonal growth, did you? No, I am... Like 99.99% certain I did not turn it off. Uh, I'm fairly certain of that. I don't typically go to the game settings very often. I uh, can't tell you folks the last time I've been there. Actually, you know what? I think I can. When we turned off stones, probably. That's probably the last time I've been there. That's, yeah, field, yeah, field stones under the same cat. Okay. So it wasn't that long ago. But then again, uh, we didn't turn seasonal growth off again because uh, we turned the stones off before all the planting. Uh, Hoover was also saying that would explain no seasonal calendar and why your beans were ready so early. We should do this more often. Turn seasonal growth off. Double crops, right? 
Uh, nah, we, we will, we'll try not to do that again. Uh, Christopher was saying, good video. Keep it up. Hey, thank you very much for that. Actually, uh, going back to Norton's comment, speaking of next season, I think, can't you uh, harvest soybeans all the way until like January or February? Maybe that's what Norton means. Corn. Oh, okay. Corn can go October to February. Soybeans. Oh, into January. So October to January, you can harvest soybeans. Good luck with that one. At least around where I live, that one. Yeah, typically you get snow. And when it snows, you don't harvest soybeans. And actually, uh, speaking of snow, one, that's actually what it's doing out here in real life at the moment. It is actually snowing here in real life. And uh, not just like snowing. It's like like proper snowing. Like we have looks like an inch or two on the ground here at this point. Okay, maybe make that three or four. I just looked out the window. Yeah, we got like proper snow on the ground here at the moment. So... I don't think there's going to be much uh, soybean harvest going on here. Which is probably not good for the farmers. Because as I've uh, said before here again, at least uh, in Michigan. I, I live in the West Michigan area. One, There has not been much harvesting going on. Uh, there was yesterday. Uh, seen a lot of farmers out yesterday doing a bunch of harvesting. But I'm guessing there's probably not, at least not soybean anyway, probably at the moment. Again, soybeans are close to the ground. So close to the ground, plus soybeans, plus snow. Not good. Yeah, farmers seem to be way behind this year for harvest, and I'm not entirely sure why. Just had something to do with the rain we had here. We had a lot of rain late in the season, so if that had something to do with it, kept the crop green longer, not sure. But, uh, yeah, farmers are taking their time getting around to harvesting here this year. Still a lot of corn and quite a bit of soybeans out in the fields yet, and Again, we're into almost November. Actually, uh, when this video goes live, it will be November. So, I don't know what harvest is looking like where you folks are at, but uh, like I said, at least in the West Michigan area, it seems like it's really late here this year. Uh, Matt was saying you need to put some fuel in the plow tractor. Oh. That's right. I forgot about that. Well, we need to take care of the plow tractor, don't we? Because... Yeah, we were looking at that. Something's not right there on field 43. That's probably what happened. Oh, I just looked at this. Uh, this grain card's going to be full, isn't it? Well, if we can at least unload the combine enough so we can make it to the end of the headland here, that would be ideal. On brakes. No, we're not gonna stop in time, are we? No, not even close. Wow. Okay, well, 69%. We don't have to make it much further. You see the grain card up there. That's all the further we got to make it. So, let's see if we can at least make it that far. Hopefully. Uh, Matt was saying, got a field score of 46 on my new field. I'm trying to get it to 99. Uh, yes. I don't, can you actually even get it to 100? I don't know if I've ever actually seen 100 or not. Speaking of field score, how are we looking on ours? Oh, okay. I can answer my own question. I went, yes, you can actually get 100. Wow. I don't know if I've ever actually seen 100 before, though. Eh, these fields aren't looking too bad. 92 and 81. Looking pretty, actually, looking really good on the field score. I mean, I'm not sure what I'm necessarily doing right. I'm not necessarily maybe trying to. Uh, well, yes and no. I, I have taken the time to take the sprayer out to some of the fields. That one just, uh, Again, you take the C and spray, spray out some of the fields that one that will bump up your, uh, which one is it here again? The weed control. So if you're down a little bit on your weed control, take your C and spray, spray out to the field, and that'll probably fix that problem. Uh, John Deerman was saying, great video. 
Uh, you're the one that inspired me to make Farming Simulator videos on my channel. I've been watching you since Farming Simulator 2013. Oh boy. Farming Simulator 2013. Oh boy, that's, uh, that's about 10 years ago now, right? Probably. I mean, I've been making Farming Simulator videos for 10 years. I might have to go back and look at this one. It's very well possible. Uh, Brian was saying, I don't mind the Fent tractors or the green color. It's the very ugly red rims I hate. Why red for the rims? Uh, I got nothing. I have no idea. Uh, Hatro is saying, how many farmers mulch their fields on a scale as big as these fields? Uh, it's like rolling the fields or rock picking. Some parts of the U.S. have to do this. Where I live, there is no rock picking or rolling or mulching. Uh, yeah, Hatro actually makes a very good uh, point on this one, everyone. Oh, really? So close. So close. Well, you know what? We, can, uh, we can sneak around here. We got enough harvest right there. We can just go around that little bit. But, uh, yeah, going by, like, to the mulching and rock picking. Especially on the, I would say, the smaller farms, that's probably where you see more mulching going on. Everyone. I don't know that I've seen a whole lot of large farms that, like, actually take the time to do, like, any sort of mulching. Now, rock picking, yes. Or rolling, absolutely. Uh, a lot of large farms I've seen definitely will still pick rocks and or uh, roll as well. Uh, you know, again, rolling, you can definitely do that on a large scale, but rolling, actually, I would say, is probably geared more towards large scale. Again, a lot of your rollers are, you know, 40, 60, 80 plus feet long, right? And it's also a fairly quick uh, job as well, something you can do, you know, moving right along doing that job usually. Now, picking stones, yeah, that's... Uh, Depends on the size of the stone, I guess. I mean, it doesn't matter how big your farm is. You got uh, stones that are too big out in the field. You gotta do something with them, right? Okay, first headland pass is complete. And I'm probably going to set this up with force play here at this point. So let's uh, get force play going here. I'm going to move that off the field just a little bit. Now I'll probably actually have force play do the first headland here again. I, I didn't on field uh, 42 that one. And I don't know if maybe I screwed something up. But uh, if you notice, and actually you probably won't be able to see it anymore because we have the mulcher running. Oh, actually you can. Oh, wait. I don't have the mulcher running? Oh. Well, I thought he was running. He's just sitting there. Oops. I'll have to get him going. Uh, anyway. Oh, no. While we're in here. Let's get you off the field a little bit more here. Not sure what that combine's doing there. I'm going to blame the header for that one, probably. Well, ditch just a little bit more here. There we go. Just so the combine can clear it. And I doubt we have any courses for this yet, so let's go ahead and generate a course. We'll go ahead and save this here too. Again, gotta make sure we load this up on both combines, so we need to save it. And we probably need, yep, need a folder here as well, so we'll call that field 27. Save course, activate field 27, 50 meter, or 50 meter, 50 foot, times two harvest. Of course, it saves right in the middle of that. Why not? You're going to be one to the left. Perfect. First wave point. Drive the course. Let's get our second combine going here as well. You're, you're spinning the back tires there, bud. Why not we uh, spin the tracks in the front? There we go. Oh, 
Okay, field 27. Um, didn't I save that course, that one? Where did I, oh wait, where did I save it? Oh, can I like move it? Uh, change mode, load course. There is a way, open course play editor. Hmm, not what I was looking for. Oh yeah, for those of you who have ever played with this, by the way, uh, you know how auto drive everyone gives you the option for editing that course play courses. I mean, it's not course. How auto drive lets you edit its routes. Well, you can kind of do the same thing with course play. It's, it's not near as nice in my opinion, but it, it, it's doable. Okay, I know there's a way to move this. Change mode. Move entry. No, why is there no access to field? Okay. Move entry. Ah, there it goes. Okay, I don't know why it took it. Whatever. Okay, then we can go here. Now we can load it up. Uh, load, activate, there we go. First waypoint, one to the right. Drive course. Let's get the uh, green cart turned on here as well. Make sure we select our field here. Field 27. And turn you on. And that is how simple it is, everyone, to unload combines with force play. Very simple one. I mean, for those of you who want to use AI workers, like uh, course play is very, very simple. Now all we need to do yet is give course play somewhere to unload. We'll drive a couple trucks in the field here. I'm guessing we'll probably need like three or maybe even four, all four trucks for this one. Again, this field I think is a little bit larger than field 42, so. I leave enough room here so all four trucks can just line up here. And I just looked at the time, and it is time to wrap it up here this episode. Uh, so on that note, I think we better uh, call it. So if you folks have any comments and or questions, be sure to leave them down below. And as always, Evan, thanks for watching. Until next time.